penguins, walnuts, pistachios, we actually have no shortage of, um, of pest species and each has um, a, a suite of natural enemies. So I won't laundry list all of those here, but I'll go over some of the key ones. I think when we speak generally in all systems, we can have what we call generalist predators in the environment that can have some level of impact on various pests. So these include things like um, green lacewings in their larval form, lady beetles in their adult and larval form, praying mantids, um, insects with really cool names like assassin bug and twice stab lady beetle and, and, and those types of things. And these generalists are nice to have around um, natural enemies that are much more specific in their utilization of pest species are going to be much more impactful. So these are often predators that feed more directly on a specific pest or a smaller subset of species and less generalist in nature, um, or things called parasitoids that are species often of a small wasp or a fly that lay their eggs on or in a pest host and utilize that as a development of off um, for their for their offspring. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go through maybe just a few of the kind of primary pests that we encounter in almonds and walnuts and talk a little bit about what's available for each and the level of impact we're, we're seeing these days from them and, and how we can use them. So navel orange worm, no surprise to anyone. This is kind of, you know, the, the, the pest du jour for a lot of reasons. It's the key pest in our nut crops. There are two parasitoid wasps that are established in California, meaning they've been introduced many, many years ago and now they exist in the orchard environment. Um, these are called Copatosoma and Goniosis. Generally, those are, those are the ge generic names. Um, both of these are species, again, they're parasitoid, so they're small wasps that lay their eggs either in the egg or an egg larval stage of navel orange worm. And then as that larva wasp develops, kills the navel orange worm in the process. Um, of these two species, goniosis is available for commercial purchase and release into the orchard. Um, it's generally kind of said that, that these species likely contribute some degree naturally to suppression of NOW or navel orange worm populations, um, but that the most significant impacts are only seen when we have high pest populations, which are generally not tolerated for this species. Um, I'll caveat those kind of conventional wisdoms with the notion that most of the applied work on these species was done back in the 80s and 90s, and we've seen a shift from more broad spectrum insecticide and pesticide use to more selective pesticides, more reliance on cultural methods like sanitation, behavioral methods, like mating disruption. And so I'm under the impression that it's really worth revisiting the impacts that these species can contribute within the NOW IPM system. Um, coddling moth, there is um, an egg parasitoid. So this parasitoid lays its egg in coddling moth eggs. So talk about tiny, this thing's tiny. Um, these are also available for purchase and release. And often this is a strategy that, that can be used in organic orchards or when paired with mating disruption to help control any eggs that are laid from mated females that might migrate into the disrupted environment. Um, I mentioned birds and bats. These are, they really can be a great help for moths like codling moth and NOW. Um, in both almonds and walnuts, there are a number of scale species um, as well as aphids that impact walnut. And each of these scale pest species and aphid species have one or more like really highly effective and species specific parasitoids that can do a really, I'll just say a bang up job at keeping um, those populations suppressed when, um, when certain chemistries aren't used at especially sensitive times. Of